Are you good obsessing or are you bad obsessing when it comes to manifesting? We're going to dive in deep and help you understand the difference and which one you actually want and how to do it right. So this applies to manifesting love, money, whatever, good health, uh, a specific person, your dream life, baby. Stay tuned. everyone, my name is Kim Velez. I am a former trauma therapist and now a transformation coach where I get to help you live the life of your dreams. We heavily focus on empowering yourself as the goddess you are and claim your worth in love and in life, baby. So if that sounds good, make sure you hit the like, share, and subscribe button. All right, so a couple quick announcements. I am doing a in-person event in West Texas. If you are in that area, it is not my event. I am uh, going to be a paid speaker there. I would love to see you there. Link is below for the details. It's in November, November 12th in El Paso, Texas. I also have all my amazing courses. I'm about to raise the prices on them all because they're super incredible and I've been giving them away for months now at very, very low prices, but they are going up this week. And if you are ready for massive transformation and ready to fully commit, I want to invite you to my 12 month coaching program, my goddess ascension mastermind. All the details are below too. So let's talk about this. So we have to understand, I don't think obsession is bad, but there are different forms of obsession and we want to make sure we're not doing the one that isn't best for you. That isn't going to get you the life that you want because, and you're going to feel like shit in the process. So I want you to understand that we're looking, we're going to call it positive obsession versus not, not good obsession, right? And positive obsession is driven by passion. The bad obsession, the obsession we don't want is the one that's operating from desperation. So think of it as being enthusiastically consumed by your vision rather than feeling desperate about if it's going to happen. When you're passionate about the goals you want, your dreams of your life, it can feel like you're obsessed in a way that fuels you rather than drains you. It's like waking up every day excited about your life, excited to visualize, excited to affirm excited of taking action towards your dreams because you want to, not because you have to. There's a big difference in that. And listen, when you're first changing self-concept, especially in love, you're going to not feel great affirming a lot of the time. You're not going to feel wonderful, you know, trying to visualize and all these things because you're operating dominantly from a version of you who's still hurting, who's still wounded, who still feels not good enough. So it does take a little bit of time to really anchor this new you in. It takes time to set these new beliefs in you of you really, truly fully knowing your worth and value, of you knowing and believing that you really are a goddess, of you not needing external validation, and of you not allowing 3D to control you. So it takes time and practice. But you want to understand when I'm creating a new life for myself, when I'm manifesting in different experiences, new circumstances, it's not doing it from a place of I feel so desperate and I need this to be this way in my life in order for me to know that I'm amazing, in order for me to know that I'm successful, in order for me to know that I am special, I am chosen, I am wanted, I am good enough. So if you don't know those things without the 3D showing you that, without the 3D mirroring it back to you, then you're gonna keep manifesting in things dominantly that you don't want. I have said this for years and I will keep saying it. When you start changing your thoughts, you will manifest in moments of getting what you want. But nine times out of 10, you won't feel good when it isn't showing in your 3D. So like, let's say you get a text or you get a little bit of money, right? As a week later, you're feeling like shit again because the texting isn't constant. And this is what trips people up the most. <laughs> they're not understanding that they're still tied into needing the 3D to show them something. You're still taking your cue from circumstances. You're still deciding and believing without the 3D mirroring back to you what you want. You don't know these things as your truth. 
So you have to understand that because I want you to get what you want, but also be able to keep it and grow it bigger and better because that's why are we here? We're not here to call something in and then lose it again. That That's the old patterns, right? The new pattern is I get what I want and when it comes in, I feel worthy and good enough and when it's on its way in and it isn't fully in, I still know I'm worthy and amazing and incredible and that takes time to really know that version of yourself. So you want to be enthusiastic about this stuff. You'll get there. And even in work, right? Like it's the same thing. Like I love what I do, which is why I do it all the time. If I had to sit here every day for five years and show up for my business out of fear, out of desperation, I don't think I would have lasted because in the beginning of my manifesting, I wasn't getting results in my 3D, but I knew I would because I know what I'm meant to do and I had a belief in me. And so now, and then I you know, kept leveling up and leveling up in my business and making different decisions and I'm always evolving and growing because even in my business, everyone is me pushed out. Even in my business, it is reflecting to me and showing me where I am playing small and where I am playing big and I'm choosing to evolve and grow in this area of my life too as all the other areas of my life. But if I had to show up every day feeling unworthy, not good enough, I wouldn't be sitting here five years later or it would be a miserable experience. And so we want to understand who are we dominantly being throughout our day. You want to be focused on the process, not just the outcome. What does that mean? Well, it means that you understand why you're doing what you're doing, because a lot of you miss this point, which keeps you stuck longer than you need to be in shitty circumstances. And in a reality you don't want is you sit here and you're like, oh my God, I'm getting texts, but he didn't ask me to marry him. And it's been, you know, two weeks or three months and it's like, okay. So look at the joy of the process. Look at like, wow, look how much I've changed. Look how much I've grown. Look at all the manifestations I've called in since I started this process. Look how I keep getting more evidence and then start seeking the evidence, right? In the sense of you don't need it to validate you. You're just acknowledging it and affirming, wow, it is coming in. I see it and more is on the way. But a lot of you don't do that. A lot of you get so hung up on, but I've been visualizing or I've been saying that, you know, he's going to ask me for a commitment and then you're getting all these texts from him. But because he hasn't said, hey, be my girlfriend immediately, you're freaking the fuck out and you're not understanding what you're doing and you're getting frustrated because what you want hasn't shown up fully and completely yet. But that's the old you who needs it to show up fully and completely. And the old you is going to keep manifesting in the same results you don't want. So you got to change you. <laughs> so I want you to start looking at yourself as like, I really love this person I'm becoming. I love that I'm getting more and more and clear on my vision. I love that. You know what? Even on the days I'm triggered, I have a solid action plan. I know what to do to work through my triggers. So eventually this trigger will be no more. Like that's empowerment. And so you want to move from an empowered place. You want to understand you clearly are powerful and you are changing, evolving and growing. So another way, the good obsession that we want, right, is like it incorporates and becomes a natural part of you, a natural part of your identity. It means that your desire is like woven into your identity in a healthy way. So a lot of people, again, if you need a specific person to say you're my girlfriend right now, the second, and if you don't get it, you, your identity is I'm not good enough, I'm not worthy, they don't want me, I'm not committable, right? Like that's not what you want, that's not gonna get you what you want. If your 3D reality is not show, you know, is not saying to you right now the second via circumstances that you're a multimillionaire and you're making impact all over the world and let's say, you know, you just started whatever, whatever your dream business is or your dream career is, or you're in the middle of it, whatever, right? If you're not getting the response in real time in your 3D reality showing you, no, you are a leader, no, you are making impact, no, you are making money, then without it, right, you don't know that you're a leader. You don't naturally know that you're successful. You don't naturally know this reality you want is yours, that it's in the bag you're not going to manifest and keep what you want. So it's really 
about not constantly checking a 3D and that's a habit that takes practice to break to see if it's working because it's become a part of you. When you know what you want is inevitable, it's naturally a part of you. It's naturally woven into your identity on a deep fucking subconscious level, which is why you're not stressing of what circumstances look like or don't. When it's the good way of obsessing, right? When we feel excited about what we're creating, that this is who we're becoming, this is what we're gonna get, you're morphing and turning into and anchoring in this new you, right? This new reality starting to feel normal and natural, even if it's not in your current 3D experience. And the beauty of this is, is that you won't, you will allow things and you won't force them. And the people that are trying to force and manipulate and control outside people and outside circumstances, you're in a version of you who this is not a natural obsession. You're in that desperate obsession. You're in the fear of if I don't get this now, if I don't know this answer now, if this is not confirmed in my 3D reality right now, then it's not happening. And then you freak and you panic and you act out of fear and that's not gonna sustain what you want. Even if you start getting what you want, it'll turn itself, it'll, it'll fall apart on some level because everyone is you pushed out and you don't believe you're worthy of this without it. And that is what will manifest more um, than holding on to it for a time, short time period. So you definitely don't wanna be trying to fix what's wrong with your current reality, right? When you're looking and noticing you don't have what you want or you don't prefer a certain circumstance, you don't want to try to fix it in the sense of, oh my God, this is terrible. I don't want this, right? You can, you can say that. You can understand that naturally, but it's more about, all right, I want to focus on better circumstances. I want to focus on a better experience for me. I want to focus on a better outcome, a better version and quality of people coming in my life, a better relationship, a better bank account, like whatever, right? All these things better. I want to focus on what that feels like to be me in that experience. And persist in that rather than, oh, I don't like this. This is scaring me. I need something different. Because that, when you need that, that's what they say, like, uh, what you resist persist, right? Like, I don't really subscribe to ignoring 3D reality in the sense of the way a lot of mainstream people push it. It's it's not, most people can't, um, and it doesn't work typically, right? So when you're noticing, like you pay money every day, you know if you have a lot of money or you don't. If you are getting a text or you're not, or you're seeing evidence in your current circumstance that is the opposite of what you want, I don't want you, you can't ignore it. Most of you won't, some, I don't wanna say can't, some people, it's easy for them, but most people, I know like 99.9%, .9 if you're dealing with self-concept and love issues, uh, most people are not gonna be never thinking anything negative about their love life with their specific person if the opposite is showing up and they're aware of it. So what the key to that is, right, is understanding that, I don't want to ignore that happen. I want to say, okay, great. I see this. This is not what I want. So here's what I would rather experience instead. Here's how I want to feel. Instead of feeling unworthy, not good enough, never chosen, hopeless, scared and insecure because of this current circumstance, I would rather feel this way. I want to feel loved. I want to feel exciting. I want to feel supported. I want to feel magical. I want to feel like a goddess, right? And then you choose that state of being for yourself by whatever means necessary in the sense of you naturally moving yourself in that state without needing artificial circumstances to impress upon you in order for you to know that. I mean, that's really how you get empowered and stay empowered and transcend anything ever in your life that you don't want to experience. So I love you all. I hope you found this video helpful. I will see you hopefully in one of my courses or come work with me or come to the live event. And I love you and I'll see you soon. Bye.